Right, we have got an absolute ton of things to do today. The first of which, I need to check up on all the new tanks that I've set up recently. Some of them need some attention. Some of them are doing great though. So this one here is quite a recent setup for my Golden Ram. There it is. <laughs> Looking good. So I've deliberately left all the growth at the back there. Le, 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 so hard to say the Ludwigia. The, le, the, I can't do it. Ludwigia at the back is growing up tall and I'm just keeping all this other stuff nice and short. But I managed to hit the balance on this one now. It's in the zone. You know what I talk about the zone when like a tank is just so balanced that you don't really have to do anything to it anymore. Since the last cleaning I did of it, nothing's changed. It's all looking so good. The only thing is some slight little diatoms down here on the carpeting plants, the Monte Carlo and the HC Cuba, and that tiny little bit of algae in the corner there. But other than that, everything is perfect. So nothing needed on that one. And then very recently I set up a tank for my Harlequin Raspora down here. Now I did something very stupid again, something that I've done before and I should know better by now. <laughs> yep, you guessed it. I left the timer on for a week straight, like flipped to on, not like working properly. I accidentally had it on on and not on auto. And I didn't know this because the lights come on before I get here, just before, um, at 5 a.m. I sort of get here about five past sometimes. And then they go off after I've left, just after five. So I'll have all my lights on for 12 hours in here, guys. Like, and that's why I get such good, good plant growth, you know, considering the fact that all of these are low energy setups um, with just like real cheap budget lighting on them. But I run the lights for 12 hours. So yeah, you can see, oh, there's some Harlequins. I mean, these guys are still a little bit frightened of me. They, uh, they tend to go and hide when I come closer, I'm not entirely sure why. Let me turn that up, there we go. They're coming out now. Good guys, don't be scared of me. Anyway, so this tank is gonna need a thorough cleaning. We've got algae all on the sides. I cleaned the front of the glass so we can see in it more. It's also got like a nice sort of brownie tinge to it. That's all the tannins from the uh, the wood all coming off. So we've got new sticks of wood. We've also got old bog wood in there. So this will look good in no time. Quick wipe down the glass, quick water change. This one will be sorted. And there we go, look, just like that, we are back in business. It looks so fresh again, doesn't it? Oh, here come the fish. There's actually more than that. There we go, keep coming. Come on, guys, all of you, they're around here. Oh, you, they're around here. <laughs> the plants are coming along really, really well, so I'm all happy. That initial little bit of algae, it's just normal dust algae for a new setup. I tested the water, in fact, it's absolutely perfect. So I'm so, so happy with this initial setup. It's going brilliantly and hopefully it continues to. Now, if you actually remember, I'm still running the light for this tank at 50%. I haven't got a dimmer or anything. I just put some electrical tape all across the top of it covering half the LEDs. Now that is absolutely essential in a low tech setup to start with, I think, especially when you run long photo periods like I do. But let's take a look at the plants closely, shall we? Well, you can see now all the air bubbles actually attached to any of the algae that's on there, but it's nothing that you can't combat and sort out. A little bit of glutaraldehyde, some more water changes. That's gonna be gone in no time, especially now I've got the timer setting correct. <laughs> But the Crips, okay, so we've had a few meltbacks on the Crips. Crips is renowned to melt back when you first sort of set them up. You can see there those white bits where we used to have some nice leaves on there, they've melted back, but the rest look, they're absolutely booming. They look fantastic as well. It's probably the best start with Crips I've ever had, if I'm honest. Now the rotunda folia, that's doubled in size there. It's doubled in size there. That's gonna need to trim back soon as well. I'm just gonna leave the tank for the moment though, let it grow out and that'll actually help with our algae problem. It's not really a problem, it's a, yeah, it's a problem because we don't want it there. <laughs> so overall, I'm extremely happy with the start of both of those aquariums, but I'll show you one that I am not happy with. It doesn't always go rosy, remember? So this right here is my albino cherry barbs tank. Well, I was going for an irigumi look, which is, you know, rocks and then plants, and it's going well, but there's also some big issues as well. So when you stand back here, it looks quite good. Slight haste to the water. That's because yesterday I did a full clean up and I think I over cleaned the little filter we got in the back there. So we've got some bacteria die off, I think. I've added more beneficial bacteria since then, so we're all good. But like back here, yeah, looks pretty good. Plants look pretty healthy and they are. But if you look closely, there's like this weird sort of fuzz over everything. Now, basically, there's there's too many nutrients in this tank. So I did, I did. This is the second dirted tank I set up. The first one being the Golden Ram tank back in there. And in this one, I went to town on the soil. I went way too much. I mean, you can't really tell from the side view, but I mean, it's shown a thickness that that's more like the thickness I did all over the whole tank. So 
I think that's just too much. Now that's just going to be trial and error. I've learned from that. Basically, both those tanks have got a little bit too much of the um, pond compost in them. So next time I'll cut it down, just a thin layer I'll do across the lot. And I think that'll be more than enough because I've done a lot of water changes on this one now. I'm still struggling with this sort of fuzz. I mean, eventually it will balance out, but it's going to take even more time, I think. But yeah, that's what that's the good thing about these experiments. You know, you, I don't know the upper limit or the lower limit, really. I now know the upper limit. I now know what I can't do. And, and judging by the previous tank, I don't want as much as that either. So I think the next time I do it, it'll work out well. In terms of fish health though, we're all doing brilliant. So these albino cherry barbs, they're popping like crazy, aren't they? So that's not even adjusted at all. That's as I'm seeing them so so vibrant i also added a couple of the um albino no they're not albino are they the yellow blue eyed bristle noses so yeah we've got a couple of the babies of those in here as well so yeah when you get a little haze to the water like that it's best just to leave it alone the bacterial cycle will just sort itself out within a couple of days i've also had to cut back on the amount of um, floating plants we've got because they were covering the surface again that's an issue because the plants need the light remember so you might be thinking oh we're getting algae because it's too much light but then if you if you stop it too much as well you stop the plant growth and then it's trying to find that balance between having the right light the right plant growth and not enough nutrients in the water column and it's just trial and error it's just a case of that and you can't change too many of the variables at the same time either you've got to try one thing sit back have a look adjust another thing and eventually it probably sorts itself out before you do <laughs> And I think that's an interesting point, actually. I think sometimes we think we're being really clever by doing this and that, and oh, I fixed the aquarium. Nine times out of 10, it just needs fresh, consistent water until it gets a balance. Now, with some tanks, I've nailed it, so that happens straight away, like the ecosystem tank, for instance. So yeah, with this one, ever since I first set it up, it was perfect. I only had a thin, thin layer of nutrients, very small, not pond compost or anything like that. It was like a mix of aquasol, sand, that kind of thing, but really low amounts. Now, as a result, the plants took a while to take off because they needed the waste from the fish to go down into the substrate system and give them that nutrients that they needed. But nowadays, look, I'm cutting this back so regularly, it's going crazy. The only algae I get is a tiny bit of green spot algae, which isn't actually on the tank at the moment because I've kept up with my maintenance. Yay! <laughs> so that is, that's another example where it can go absolutely right from the get-go. One more to change in this since I set it up. And then we've got the African river tank. So I did the sand cap and then I did the um, aqua soil in the bags underneath. Now this is by far the best way of doing it. No doubt about it in my mind. Uh, the plants still grow insanely well with the aqua soil in the bags because the roots go into them. The thing is aqua soil is expensive so it's not an option for everyone, especially if you've got a big tank. So the dirted method, it works well as well. I mean, we've got HC Cuba growing down there with a very cheap budget light that's not even pumping out a lot. The thing is though, is with, with the dirted tanks, you have to be a little bit more on it. You have to be more precise. Like for instance, this one, part of me wants to just start again because I know I messed up. And the other part of me is like, no, just stick with it. I mean, it's still looking fantastic, isn't it? I mean, these plants are growing nicely at the back. They're gonna need to trim back soon. I don't wanna trim them now whilst it's trying to get the balance though. And then this one, obviously the compost pond soil as well. This one went perfect from the start for a good couple of weeks. Then we started to see some algae introducing, nothing like you're seeing in the other tank in the cherry barbs, but it was there, but I've cleared it in no time. So maybe that's the perfect amount because the plants grow fast. They look really, really healthy. And yeah, it's uh, it's another option, that's all I'm saying. If you do the pond soil method, your skills need to be on point or you need to be willing to learn fast and have some upsets. So here's how the Platy Mountain's doing. Um, I've, I need to trim it and top it up. The whole side panel here was covered in algae, but it's gone and it's not been eaten off. I think the tank's finally getting into a really good balance. I did add this mini water lettuce at the top here, right in the middle there. So you didn't have any floating plants in this tank and I had some spare and I wanted to make sure that, you know, you, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. So I didn't want to put all of them that I bought all into one tank. So I put some in here as well and they're growing great. They're obviously putting a load of nutrients out of the water column because, hang on, there we go. Oh, no, there we go. Look at those brand new roots appearing on them. First thing I want to do is remove the floating plants. This is because when we trim all the plants under the water, they all float to the surface 
and getting that all tangled in with them is going to be a nightmare. So just take them out, put them to the side. I also thought this whole job would be a lot easier if I just fill the water level right up to where it's going to be. I can then see where the plants are sitting and it just makes it all easier. See what we're doing and trim easier as well. And then I go to town with the scissors. I'm not really doing this in any sort of way that's planned. I'm just getting in there, getting stuck in, hacking it right back. It's the only way with this pearl weed because it grows so fast that you just need to take it right down low again. Otherwise, I'll be trimming again next week. I suppose that's not a problem at all if you've just got one tank, but obviously I don't. <laughs> I actually had to be really careful when I was trimming all this because the fish kept swimming around where I was snipping and I was really worried about catching one of them. Not so much the small ones, but the big ones there, even they were paying interest in what I was doing. Next up was a little scraping of the glass. It's pretty good to be honest. It's just this little spot in the corner here. Obviously being very careful with the razor blade not to touch the otosynclus. And you might be thinking I'm taking away their food source, but look, there's loads all over the rock. So if they want to go and have a peck somewhere, there's plenty of places they can do that. I noticed that the pathway at the middle was sort of getting a bit compact. It hadn't been stirred up in a while. Obviously there's no quarries in this tank, so they're not turning it over in a sense. So we have to do it by hand and just using some pincers here to stir it up a little bit flick up some of the crud that's all on the surface into the water column, the filter will take all that out. It's amazing how much more fresh it looks when you've done this as well. And then after I spent about 20 minutes trying to get out every last piece of trimming that I made, I put the floating plants back in. So total maintenance time for this tank, about 30 minutes. That's probably average for a tank that establishes this, you know, a month and a half to two months old tank. 30 minutes once a week would be absolutely fine. To be honest, I'd probably leave it 30 minutes every other week. Really established tanks are probably about 15 minutes every month. <laughs> New tanks though, way, way longer. You're talking like an hour every three days or so. Right, one of the things that's wrong with the Cherry Barb Irigumi is that the filter that I've got on it was one that I just had laying around and it's actually, look, the flow is really, really poor on it. It's, can you see that? <laughs> so the other one I've got of this is in the Harlequin tank. Now that's got a sort of spray bar on it. I lost the spray bar for this. So what I'm gonna do, I've ordered a new one, much better flow, because I'm thinking that all this waste on the bottom is gonna get swooped up into it. So from what I can tell by looking at this, we've obviously got that flow right in that corner, yeah? But it feel like it's lost everywhere else. I mean, these leaves aren't even moving around on these plants, and as a result, look, getting stuff sort of settling on them, that sort of wispy algae look. So I feel like if we have like a bit better flow in this tank, then even the stuff down the bottom that's getting caught up will get whisked away a little bit. Now I know the lighting's not the issue with this tank because I've got other, you know, lights, exactly the same light as this over in the other Golden Ram tank and that's doing perfectly. So it's got to be nutrients or flow. Now this will solve the flow and then hopefully the nutrients will happen in time. Okay, so the way that this new filter is set up, look, it's got this long upward pipe. Now that's not gonna fit, is it, because of our sand? So I'm just gonna cut this pipe somewhere in the middle and then I can have it up higher and the, and the flow will go across and then we'll be all good. So I'm gonna make them, yeah, just about there I need to cut it. I'm looking at this thinking, why is it so fast at the end? Is it all coming out of this sort of tiny little offshoot here? And I realized I haven't put the end cap on. It's all going straight out of the pipe. I thought the flow was a bit poor in that top section. <laughs> Need to put that on. Right, so I've left that sort of flow on like that just for a little bit, just to get everything sort of cleared. 
sucking up some of the waste and that. I'm going to turn it down though because that's obviously that's way too high. I don't think the fish would mind to be honest. They seem to be really enjoying swimming and out, out of it. I mean, this this one up here looks right inside the flow, sort of dancing in it. But I think the plants would suffer. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But it's best just to turn it down a little bit for the time being. We can always adjust as we go along, can't we? Like, there we go. That's turned down now to um, the lowest setting. Yeah, I think that's a bit more accurate. That's like it's still fast, but it's not like crazy fast now. Those surface plants are probably not going to like this either. <laughs> but you know, we'll just see how it goes. Uh, if I need to, I can pack out the filter with more media and that actually slows the flow rate down as well. Now, speaking of floating plants, take a look at this. <laughs> this is the Neon Tetra jungle tank. Really is a jungle. You can barely see in it, there's so many plants. <laughs> okay, that, that's just ridiculous, isn't it? So what I did was I lowered the light because I was keeping the floating plants, I was keeping quite a lot because we wanted that jungly look. But what's happened is they've grown so fast, they've doubled up, they've blocked up all the light, they've caused algae because there's no flow. You can't see that, hang on, let me bring the ISO. There we go, look at that. Look, there's just algae in amongst it all. There's no flow getting through at the back and there's all this light directly on top of it. So I'm gonna do two things, put the light back up and reduce all of this stuff. So I'm gonna take all of this out and put in some fresh stuff. Look at that, look at what it's doing to the water. All that stuff is going into it. Gonna to need to do a big water change, I think, because, yeah, that is nasty. <laughs> plants, though, plants look great, don't they? <laughs> More on that in a minute. So that's all the floating plants out, completely clear. The water isn't, obviously. Now, there's no smell coming from this tank at all, which suggests to me that everything is all good. It just smells like nothing, which is perfect. And I tell you what, these cryptocryony balance, look, they've come all the way to the forward. It looks so cool, doesn't it? It's gonna look so much better in a minute. That is what I'm talking about. How stunning does that look with the fish as well? All of the fish, by the way, are extremely healthy in here. They've put on good size since I got them actually because I didn't get them fully grown. So they're like, they're getting there, I think, adult size now. I don't think I've lost any in this tank at all. Um, I mean, normally when you get big groups, you do get some dafts, but I've not seen a single death in this whole group. <laughs> they're so good, look. Look at them all schooling over to me. This way, guys. Over here. Come on. They know I always feed here, see, so that's why they're all coming here. <laughs> right, so yeah, the plants, look at the plants. So I let this grow out in the end. I was going to trim this one back, but I quite liked it coming in the foreground as that focal point at the side. We've got the gap down the middle. If you remember, the uh, Java ferns were looking like a little bit drab, but they've bounced right back as well, haven't they? In the foreground, if you remember, I took out the Glossostigma, but look at that. You see that there? That's a run of Glossostigma. So it did survive some of it. Um, I think I just had some melt back, to be honest. I wasn't patient enough with it, but you live and learn, don't you? Now over to this side, look, all the all the um, sages all crept forward as it always does, but I think it looks great anyway. The Liliopsis brasiliensis, look, is creeping all the way round. Monte Carlo's taking a bit of a hit, but that'll be because that lack of light that we had. So now that we've got the light, um, it should start growing back quite well. You can see some of it there coming through. Very green, this tank. That was the idea because I wanted the plant, uh, the fish, sorry, to pop so well, and that's exactly what they do. We should probably feed them now, shouldn't we? Come on then, fishy fishies. Here you go. It's coming. I like to like put it in my fingers like this, look, and just break it up so it goes into sort of finer pieces. Then everyone gets a little bit. Look, okay, and there we go. Oh, whoa, go crazy. Food, 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 food. You'd think I haven't fed them before, but I did. I fed them two days ago. In fact, oh, I've got a little bit more on my finger there. There we go. Have it, guys. <laughs> See, that's the thing with Neon Tetras, you really do need a good size shoal of them to really get the most out of them. Like, if you get like six or whatever, it's nice, don't get me wrong, but you don't get this. This is cool. They're always like this as well. <laughs> I recommend you get a good group of 20. I mean, this tank here is two foot, so 60 centimeters. A group of 20 in here is ideal. I think I've got about 30, to be honest, but 
the, I've got a lot of plants. Most of you won't be having that to start with. Although if you get fast growing plants in no time at all, they can sort of just comp continue to grow and multiply like mine have. Yeah, 20 to 30 neon tetras, they're a classic. They're one of the cheapest fish you can buy as well. And they just look awesome. I mean, if we had say a centerpiece in our living room that was say four foot tank, I'd say just get like 200 of them. Just get 200, nice green tank, easy growing plants, um, medium sort of level light. It's gonna look stunning, isn't it? To everyone that like visits your house and even for you just to sit and watch. And then just a very quick update over here on the new Epistogramma tank. Quick update because there's not much to talk about. Everything's going perfectly. It's only day five or six, six. I think since I actually set, set it up, so you don't even get algae really settling at that time, unless you've got a massively high powered light that is. And we do have a high powered light, but I've sort of just put a, a, a plastic strip of, of electrical tape across it, cutting out half the LED. So we're actually really good. It's going, it's going lovely. Fish are all colored up and looking great. So yeah, look, there's the male epistogramma right there. Turn to the side, buddy. It'll be feeding time in a minute, but let's just take a look at you first. There we go, there's those colors. Look at you, absolutely stunning. So what is funny about him is that, see that front part of him, how he's got like darker patch and then it goes yellow. Well that darker patch, depending on sort of stress or mood or whatever, goes completely, look, look as we're talking, it's getting more and more yellow. It's like color changing. It's so cool to see. It's almost like I, as I step to the tank, I think it's a little bit like the bars you get in, um, in discus. If they feel threatened or anything, the bars show. So like this front face goes darker and then it starts to come lighter and lighter as time goes by. It will go fully yellow as well. And there's the female, look, just peeking out now. They are literally using this cave. The exact reason why I made it like this was so they'd use it for that. And he's just been showing her some signs of aggression as well. I didn't catch it on camera, but that to me suggests there could be some more breeding action soon. We know they're a breeding pair. I've already got a ton of babies from them. Um, there we go, look, there we go. He's doing stuff, it's, 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 it's all good. It's all good. We're gonna get more babies from this tank. The tank's growing in well. The uh, plants, well, I assume it's growing in well. Nothing's happened in five days, but the plants haven't died off, put it that way. <laughs> so on to some great success with this one, I think. So that is the rundown of all of the 60 centimetre two foot tanks, guys. They're, pretty much all of them are quite new in terms of you know actual long-term scapes. They're all within like a month, apart from the Platy Mountain. So, oh, and the Neon Tetra. Yeah, but <laughs> you can see that everything. So they're not all new at all. Anyway, it was nice to give an update on them all, wasn't it? So if you've enjoyed this one, like, subscribe, all the usual stuff. See you on the next one.